Let's put our hands together and give God some praise. 
verse 25 and 26. This is what he said. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though, this is what Glassby said, and though after my skin worms destroy this body, mm, yet in my flesh I will see God. To God be the glory. Can I get an amen? amen.
Let our souls look up with a steadfast hope. And let our wills be lost in thine. Lord, as we come to celebrate this great victory over life and over the grave, draw us nearer, nearer to the cross where thou hast died. Lord, thou in whom we live, move and have our mere being now, who art the author and finish of our faith. And thou who art the sustainer of life, we come first of all thanking you for the life and legacy of John Father Robert Austin. For the life that he lived among us, we thank you for loaning him to us for 60 plus years. We thank you because you didn't have to do that. We thank you for all that was in his life that was good and kind and pleasant and joyful. We thank you, Lord, for your son Jesus, his love that was manifested in the life of Brother Barney. We ask now that you will wrap your loving arms and tender compassion around the members of the family, loved ones, and friends. Lord, search out to be that wherever it is you see that we need. Please grant it according to your loving kindness and your tender mercy. We thank you for this day and for what it means to us. We thank you for life. And for all of the experiences and opportunities, Lord God, that you allow us to share. We ask now that you hold the members of the family in the hollow of your hand. Speak to their hearts and minds right now, eternal God, and let them know that even in the midst of the death that they are going through, that you're still God, that you're still on the throne, and that all power is still in your hands. We thank you for his life and legacy. We thank you for what he meant to this church, this community, this world, this family. We ask, oh God, that we continue to live our lives so that when we too shall have come to the end of our earthly journeys, as we enter your kingdom, we'll see your smiling face and hear your welcoming voice saying to each of us, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things, and now I will make you rulers of the many. Enter now to the joys that have been prepared for us. Your blessings upon now, us now, Lord, as we come to celebrate his life and legacy. Strengthen us when we're weak. And when we stumble and fall, pick us up and put our feet on the rock, but help us to know that thou art that rock. Give us right now the bread that we need to carry us through tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Yes. Hold us and we shall be held. Yes. Keep us and we shall be killed. Yes. In the magnificent, precious name of Christ we ask it. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.
come join your church and you say, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> we thank God. When he came to join our church, we were able to say hallelujah. So this is difficult, but we we still we yet give God the praise. We're stuck between a tear and a thank you. But we give God praise even with the tears in our eyes. So we're going to move on into the program. We're going to have um, the poem by Sister Linda Smoot, and then we're going to have a solo by Sister Gwen Petaway, and then we're going to have the acknowledgement by Sister Clara Gray and the church paper by Sister Clara Gray, and then I'm going to come back with further instructions from there.
Early Sunday morning, July 9th, 2023, Charles Bobby Robert Austin departed his earthly life and rest peacefully in the arms of the Lord. Bobby was born <coughs> September 9th, 1955, to the late Charles Brown and Solomon Ricks. Bobby loved the outdoors, and any time he could ride a horse, motorcycle, or play ball, he did. Bobby loved working in his yard and took pride in watching every blade of grass and plants grow. Even during his recent illness, he was out on his moor cleaning pine cones from his yard. Bobby met the love of his mouth. Ernestine Ip, when he saw her pass his hospital room in Nash General Hospital, that was over 30 years ago when he asked her for her. <coughs> September 9, 2023, they would have been married 28 years. Mm -hmm. While attending their 
relationship of individuals through service. On January 27th, 2019, Bobby joined St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. He served as deacon and was also on the board of directors of the Panola Heights Housing Development Corporation. He retired from Air Balls Corporation as a supervisor and was respectfully referred to as Charles in charge. <laughs> the five new family members, wife, Ernestine Austin, sister Cheryl Austin of White Plains, Maryland, foster sister, Pastor Nash of Fredericksburg, Virginia, niece Tia Jones, great nephew, Dejan Jones of Summerfield, North Carolina, Aunt Brenda Lucas, husband Marvin of Spring Lake, North Carolina, Aunt Mary Austin of Fuquay Arena, North Carolina, sisters-in-law Gloria Wilkins and Willie Mae Brown of Greenville, North Carolina, niece Abby Bax of Greenville, North Carolina, nephews Willie James Bax and Yvonne Bax of Greenville, North Carolina, and a host of relatives and friends.
behalf of the officers and members of St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church, Pastor Reverend George A. Terry. Thank you for being so attentive on behalf of the family.
parents and grandparents. Right. Bobby was very serious about school. When he attended Federal State University, he lived in Brennan and my home. And we really became almost certainly parents of Bobby. Bobby was a wonderful gentleman, and he was a good friend and a, a big brother to our son Darrell and to our two daughters. And he was really a kind, kind friend of group by group. He brought his group by group to go to our house, especially the twins, Terry and Jerry. They were commonly known at our house quite frequently. Bobby really didn't talk a lot. He just did a lot. Spice. Fights. You have to understand fights. And if you're going to really seek the kingdom, you're going to have to live like fights do. That's right, absolutely. I would stop by saying that Bobby really epitomized the William Cullen Bryant poem. So live that when thy summons come to join that innumerable caravan which moves to that mysterious realm where each shall take his chamber in the silent hall of death, thou go not like a foreign slave knight, scourged to his dungeon, but sustained and soothed by an unfaltering trust. Approach thy grave like one who wraps the drapery of his couch about him and lies down to pleasant dreams.
brother and minister just told you how adamant he was about doing things the right way. <laughs> Hence, to go against the groove means to work against the current establishment. And with the way things are going with our current government leaders, there is absolutely the need to go against some of that. <laughs> Grooving is associated with socializing and fellowshipping. And that is kind of the epitome of group by in the brotherhood and the friendship that we share with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I didn't get to know Charles very long. I came to Tarboro uh, about four or five years ago, and this was my church home as a kid. And Charles was here, and I talked with him about things that he was doing in the community and with this church, and he became an inspiration to me to try and get life things done here at the church and in the community. And I just want the family to know that that inspiration will live on with the brotherhood, the fellowship, and with myself. And as the brother minister and the minister said, as they talked about the feebleness of death, I'll say this in, as I close, death is not as terrible as he will have you believe. The brothers, one short sleep, and he awakens in eternity at the right hand of the Savior and Almighty, and death itself will die. Thank you.
I have to stop you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a gentleman here that you all need to know, and I need to make sure he gets my phone number in case the money gets circulating around here. Mr. Marvin Lucas is a member of the House of Representatives. That is uh, Bobby's uncle. Amen. I just want to thank you. Amen. He's a member of the House of Representatives. And listen, it is, it's, it's a little warm in here. Well, I'm not going to tell you, it's hot in here. <laughs> but I was, I was accepted because I was told there's a place. That's harder than this. Amen. Amen. I'm done. I, uh, but you know, they told me that you people draw heat. It's cool in here for you all got me. But we're doing the best we can to accommodate. And let me say this, thank you to whoever it was that bought the nets. You didn't have to. <laughs>
to the 14th chapter of St. John. Then I want to just take a couple of verses out from the 5th chapter, also uh, St. John. To God be the Lord. And again, I want to say to Sister Ernestine, thank you, baby, for making St. Paul your home. Job. Because everybody needs a place that they can call home. Oh my God. And I want to leave this with you also before I get into the message. It's not the one way we can get to heaven. We cannot take these bodies, flesh and blood. We got to go through the cemetery. Got to. Jesus said, Very, very, I say unto you, the day is coming. Well, and already is. He said that he will call. And when he called everyone that in the grave got to come for. Got to come for the good. Some come for the bad. But I'm here to tell you, can't nobody but you know where but you. And I thank God for my brother. He knew where he was going. And I asked people all sometimes. I said, uh, you were born again, believe me. I said, yes. I said, do you know where you're going? Mm. And they say, yes. I said, good. And I don't have to say nothing else. <laughs> to God be the Lord. But I take this 14th chapter here. And I want to, so don't you hear it all the time. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me, Jesus God. And he's saying, other hand, he's trying to get us to remember that, hey, you don't have to work. God done already, he done paid it all. When he said it was finished on the cross, he paid it all. And I want you to know that when he paid it all, he talked to those disciples before he went back or going back up to heaven. That's why he said, let not your heart be troubled. Don't worry. If you believe in God, believe also in me. But in my father's house are many matches. If it wasn't so, I would have told you. But I'm going there to prepare a place for him. And if I go, I'm going to come again. To receive you unto myself. And where I am, you should be also. Over here. Not your mama, not your dad, but everybody can go. But I stopped by to tell you this evening for a few minutes. God don't want nobody to go to that other age. It won't make for you. It was made for Satan and his angels. Heaven was made for us. And I tell people so many times. As I use this as a sermon of saying, let not your heart be troubled. Mm -hmm. But then, I want to tell you that one thing about going to heaven, you got to die. Yeah. You got to go to heaven. Yeah. And Brother Bobby and I talk about this so many times. Yeah. And so I say to you, I thought it was just going to be you know, he was going to get up in this good way. But God knew what he was doing, sister. And so, one thing about it, he can't crown him until we get there. Amen. So I say to you all, hold on. Hold, on. hold out. Because one day, baby sister, we're going to be there too. Amen. I'm going to have a brand new walk. Brand new walk. Brand new talk. Yeah. See, I'm going to have that street that paid would go. No, I'm going to have some street that made would go. Anything paid, I don't want. I want something that made. From the hand made, I know it's solid. So I'm here to tell you all. He got a crown. I got one too. And every one of us one day is going to be in there. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask you now to hide all the servant behind the cross that you speak through the little place. Don't let them see and hear me, but let them hear and see you. Lord God, we thank you for everyone that's here today. We're going to 
pray for a few minutes and we're going to glorify it. In Jesus' name. In all that we say, amen. Amen. I know there's so many good things I can say about Brother Bob or Charles because I see him wanting to make sure that her little sister, whenever she came up to get her box, sometimes it would be an 18-wheeler and be standing in the rain. And he would say, hey, let me get it, Pastor. And he would get it. And Charles was just a human man. And I say to Sistine and to the awesome family, he's awesome, was awesome, awesome. I can't say enough about it. I want to start telling the things that he had done for this pastor, this church. Because I'm so happy that he crossed my path Amen. and showed me some things. And I recall one day he told me out there in front of the people working on the building. He said, Pastor, I want to tell you, I do everything for you, he said, but I'm going to tell you now. He said, but I ain't going up on that building. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I heard you've been up there. I said, yeah. I said, that was back in the day. I said, but I ain't going back up there <laughs> But I say to you all, see, one thing we got to realize, one day when we get to heaven, we're going to have a glorified body. Just like Jesus. On the other hand, we can, we'll be able to walk right through the wall. Hello, y'all. Y'all know when he was on the road to the mess and when he got to the house, you know the story. Amen. He just went back. See him. And we sang some, I want to be just like Do you really want to be like Talk about lying on Hello, y'all. You got to watch it when you talk about I want to be like Jesus. Because you got to go through something you're going to be like Jesus. But I think about so many times a pastor and deacon want to give up. But you can't give up. You can't. See, because if the God called you, anointed you, and appointed you, you got to keep moving. Don't look back. See, Jesus, even he didn't have a little while. And I remember when he was getting ready to leave his disciple, he kept telling them a little while. And they kept, well, what are you talking about? A little while, but I stopped by to tell you today, you only got a little while. If you don't tell somebody you're going to love them, you better tell them because you got a little while. And soon and very soon, we got to go meet the king. Other hand, out of here, this is not our home. Heaven was made for us. Hell was made for the devil and his angels. Oh, yeah. So I say to you all this evening, get ready for your breakthrough. Because it's just like we drive a four-wheel car. If you look at the review, or look at the side of the mirror, it said the object is closer than the field. I think about it. If you look at that object, just think about it. It is close for you. It appeared. Come on, pal. I was thinking about in Chicago yesterday. They were talking about all the clouds they saw looked like mountains in in uh, Chicago, and said they never seen it like that before. And I won't forget that Pastor Jesse Jackson and Pastor Clay even called me and said he wants you to come to Chicago. I said, no, not now. I said, I'm going to be on vacation. <laughs> and I got to tell him that it was good that, I, that he saw those mountains. See, because God is trying to show us something. Oh, yeah. And I say to all of you all today, get ready for your breakthrough because God is getting ready to move you out of just seeing something that matters. He getting ready to move you into the supernatural. Yeah. Oh, man, he getting ready to do things that we never seen before. Yeah. And just remember, everything got to have a purse when he gets stolen. Yeah. When Lazarus went in the tomb, somebody said, that was first. No, it wasn't because he lied to raise the widow son. That was first. But the same God that done that back then can do it here today. Yeah. So I say to all of you all, when you were born into God's kingdom, His word, 
Because this is his word. He made everything here. He put you in the supernatural too. Because you have a special gift. Your gift is not like my gift. And Brother Charles' gift wasn't like my gift. So I say to all of you all today, get ready, children, and let's go home. Because he's coming back at a church without a spot of rain. Not a big deal. He's coming back. Other hand, I say to you, as the scripture said, rejoice when they're going out and be sad when they come in. So I say to all of you all, you are grieving now, but ride out the stone. Because soon and very soon, the same God that brought you in this world is going to take you out. Not for being angry, but he's going to take you back up because he loves you. He loves you so much. And see, you just want up for a little while. But it's so bad, to be real bad, if you get up here and all of a sudden he takes you, turn away from the because Jesus said, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And everyone got to go and stand before Jesus. Not before a cow, no, but before Jesus. And everything that you done do, you don't have to have a computer. Don't need it. Because it's in the book. And if your name is not in the right book, I understand it's the two books. So, it's up to you. So, as Susan Brian was saying, I'm coming home. Come along. I'm all by myself. Oh, yeah. Don't sign the road. God can do it. And so I say to you all today, I don't have time to finish this here because I want to make sure that John and Taylor do that job. Mm -hmm. But I love you guys. And to God be the Lord. And just come back and I'll give you the rest of the sermon. <laughs> <laughs>
Dollar had got them all.
Thank <laughs> you. 